Hi, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. In this video, we are going to talk about Flare project templates. Mostly that means these guys right here. When you create a new, brand new Flare project and you're in the wizard and you see all these built-in factory templates, I am going to go through what these different templates and the different categories mean. And hopefully it'll help you make a decision on what you should use. I'm going to start down here with this empty template. Then I will talk about these templates that are under the online folder, then online and print, then print, and then these tutorials and some additional project templates that you could download. And that means this link right here. And I'm also going to take you through steps if you want to create your own custom Flare project template. Starting with the empty template, let's say you create a new project based on that template. Well, you're going to start with minimal files. You're going to have just one topic in here, and you will have a set of resource files, uh, including this branding CSS file, which is created when you go through that wizard and you exchange the template colors and font and images for your own company stuff. And you're also going to have some images page layouts and style sheet in here. So these are files that are just going to work with your topics and other content files. And in the project organizer, if I just expand that, you're going to have a variety of other files that are available to you, but you're probably going to change, um, add your own files, delete files that you don't need. If we look at the output from the empty template, you can see it's very, very basic. It is set up initially to use this side navigation. And so you would open topics over here on the left and you've got a search bar. Basically, this is as clean as it gets starting out with a template. Then we have this folder that says online and we've got five different templates in there. And as you click each one, of course, it's going to change on the right hand side. So you get a glimpse of what it's going to look like. Now online simply means that these particular templates are set up out of the box to just produce online output and specifically HTML5, which is what most people are going to use. You can add print-based output, such as PDFs to it, of course you can. You can do that with any of the templates. But you might want to select one of these if you know for sure that you're only really going to be creating online output. The e-learning template, of course, is used if you happen to be someone in training. You need to create online e-learning courses. So people have to answer certain questions. Maybe it's going to be tested. Uh, maybe you're going to use SCORM to measure their success or failure. And you're go going to get a set of topics in here, which you can change. Um, that's true with any template. But this just gives you a rundown of how this course works. People are going to work through these topics, and we named them like this, one, two, three, four, just because that lets us know, all right, they're intended to work through them in the output in that order. Uh, so course content, there's also topics for knowledge check, and then test topics that you can have. And you're also going to have some resource files, different things that are going to help to support this output. Let's see how this displays when you generate the output. So the first page looks like this, and this is what we call skinless output, where you don't really have any navigation built in across the top or along the side. The navigation is really going to be done with the links or toolbar at the bottom that lets people proceed from one topic to another. And so this very simply starts like this, and you're going to see topics with different content and these next and previous uh, buttons in here. And you've got this bar that shows their progress as they're working their way through it. Here's a knowledge check. So you can uh, have people answer that and they are going to get feedback on whether they're correct or not and so on. And they just kind of work through this. And then at the end, there can also be a test that tells them their percentage of success or failure. Now let's talk about this knowledge base template. This is something that uh, some companies will use. Maybe it is maintained by a tech support department. It has articles and release notes and system requirements, different topics like that. It maybe fills in gaps that the online help didn't cover. 
And so you can see you got the, your topics and the same kinds of resource files and of course, project files, uh, you know, all of these templates are going to have certain things like targets in them. They're gonna have TOCs. They're gonna have different files that are just necessary to make the output do what you intended. Let's look at the output for this. So this is similar to that empty page output where it is using what's called the side navigation layout. So you navigate to different topics over here on the left. We have a search bar there and the home page is a little bit uh, fancier. It's got a little bit more information, some drop downs in here if you want to use them. And we have this area down at the bottom of the home page, which shows your company's information and logo. And so a typical article might look something like this, and you would just fill in that information and release notes, system requirements. That's what you're going to get with uh, the knowledge base template. And then there is the side navigation online template. And this is going to be similar to the knowledge base and empty ones because it's set up for side navigation, obviously, because of the name. And you're just going to get some starter topics in here that you might use, say, in an online help system. And you're going to replace these as you need. All kinds of different things in here, your resource files and so on, and the project organizer files that you will also need. And let's look just quickly at the project organizer. What gives this particular output its format with side navigation is a skin. And I'll open this guy up right here. And if you come up to the setup tab, you're going to see the main menu position right here. It's set to left. And I could change it so that the navigation is over on the right easily. Or I could change it so that it's top navigation. But that is what the skin is going to get you. And you maybe will use a template like this if you're creating an online help system and you just want that navigation off on one side or the other. Let's look at the output. Somewhat similar to the knowledge base, you just got more topics in here. So that's just the structure of the TOC that is driving that. So pretty simple. You got a home page which has more information and these icons in here, you could swap these out for something else and put in your own links. But yeah, you got your search bar, pretty similar to what we've seen, just different content. Now the top navigation template is very similar to the side navigation. Same kinds of files that you saw in the side navigation you're gonna see in here. Uh, the main difference is that the skin is going to be set up to show the navigation across the top. And you're gonna see these extra little skins in here called skin components that are used because of this particular configuration. And we'll see more when we look in the output. And so the top navigation, of course, runs across the top, and this follows the structure of the TOC. So things at the first level are going to be up here at the top. And then if they have things underneath them indented, it would be below that, and you'd get those here and then click on them. The uh, home page, similar to what we've seen. Now let's go into one of these topics. You're going to notice this is different because you don't want too many levels showing up up here. Instead, what you're probably going to want to do is have the navigation with those topics so that people can get deeper in if you have more levels. And so this is controlled with uh, the look and feel with a, one of those little skin components that we saw, along with what's called a proxy. And the same thing with this search bar. Uh, used a skin component and a proxy for that. And that is used because we didn't have room in the skin to put the search bar up here. So it made sense to just kind of put it down here. The next template is called TriPane. And similar files to what you saw in uh, side navigation and top navigation, but your skin is going to be different. It's the TriPane skin. This is a little bit kind of old school stuff. Uh, so people who were working back in the you know, in the 90s and early 2000s might have been using chum output, and you have these three distinct frames uh, in there. And so if you kind of like that configuration, you might prefer the tripane output. It is a little bit older looking than the others, but it's there in case you prefer this one. We'll take a look at the output. So this is what we mean by tripane. Here's pane one, here's pane two, 
pain three. And so this has contents in it, TOC. But if you were to add, say, an index or a glossary, they would show up as tabs over here too, and you could click and navigate around those. Now let's talk about these online and print templates in here. So you're going to notice the similar names to what we saw in online. And in fact, the output, the files are pretty much the same, except for the fact that these are set up to also include PDF output. So if you know for a fact that you definitely want both online and PDF output in your own project, you might want to select one of these. So here's a project that is using the side navigation and PDF template. So very similar to the regular, uh, just online only side navigation project template, but we have these for front matter topics in here. And in fact, it's just one a title page so that you have specific content that is used only in print. And if we look under resources, we're going to see this page layouts folder with a couple of page layout files, and that these are going to let you uh, structure how the pages in the PDF output are going to look, the page size, margins, page numbers, things like that. And if we look at the project organizer, not only do we have an HTML5 target, but we now have also a PDF target. Those are the big changes. So the online output is going to look identical to the side navigation output that we saw previously, and the PDF output would look something like this with the title page, and we got TOC and the topics. You already have the footers in there with content and page numbers and so on, goes all the way to the end, and you got a glossary in there and an index. And now the print project templates. So these are four different kinds of project templates. You can see how they look over on the right. And so you might choose one of these if you specifically want to create a brochure or a product foldout or something like that. And maybe you don't do or don't want to create online output. Uh, just like with the online project templates, you can add PDF to those. And in the same way with these, you can add online output with them. Doesn't matter. Let's talk briefly about these different templates. So the brochure project template, pretty easy to understand because we've all seen brochures. So you have an inside topic and an outside topic. And these, because they're intended for print-based output, you probably, when you're working with these, you want to switch the layout from web to print layout. And that's going to give you an idea of how it's actually supposed to look. And you'll have uh, a few resources in here, images, page layouts, and your branding and regular style sheets, project organizer, because this is print-based output only. Uh, initially, out of the box, you're going to get just a PDF target, and you won't have a skin because those are really used mainly for online output. So the brochure is set up to look like this, with the three panes on the outside, uh, including the title pane right here. And you, of course, you replace this content in the panes with whatever you want. The policies and procedures project template has some topics in here that might be relevant to this kind of output. So these things right here. And of course, you got your front matter topics, your title right there. Same thing as uh, the other print based outputs, the same kind of files. And you're going to have of course, the PDF target. Let's see how it looks in the output. So similar to the PDF that we saw before, except the content is really somewhat different in here. So harassment, harassment policy, attendance, you know, things like that. But otherwise, it looks very similar to uh, the user guide that we looked at before. The product foldout project template is similar to the brochure project template because it also only has two topics, a front and a back. And you open these up, just like in the brochure template, you want to be using this print layout so you can see how the foldout is intended to look and work. So you have uh, four panes here on the front and then four more on the back. 
and you would replace all of this with your own content. And let's check out the output. So the output is going to look like this. So you can imagine how you kind of fold it in a sort of an accordion manner. And that is the outside or that's the front. And then this would be what the back looks like. So you might use a template like this if you are shipping something, uh, some kind of product, and you just want an easy fold out with instructions and how to install it. Now, the user guide project template is pretty much identical to the user guide that we saw with the site navigation and PDF template. Uh, it's just that this project is set up only for that print-based output. So you got these topics in here that sort of make up your chapter topics, uh, your front matter, your, your title page, other files uh, that are going to support this, including your page layouts. And the output, again, is pretty much the same or very close to it, what we saw with the site navigation and PDF template. Finally, we've got a couple of templates down here under tutorials. And these project templates exist really because we have tutorials in the online help, which people can open to go through an interactive process, uh, looking at the instructions and actually following along in a real FLAIR project. And so one is based on the city of Austin, Texas, and you can see it's this side navigation output. And San Diego is like this, and it's got top navigation and some PDF output. And so you're going to be using these if you work your way through the tutorials. Now you could actually use these. You can uh, create a new project based on these and just adjust it with your own content and actually use these. But the real purpose of these is for the tutorials. In addition to these built-in factory templates, you can click this button right here. That's gonna open this page of the Madcap Software website, and you come down here and you can just scroll through lots of other templates. And so you can see what they look like. Some of these are really cool and very fancy. Um, and so if you find one that you like, you just download it. And so you don't need to go through the wizard in Flare. You'll just double, you'll just open that download and it will load the project into Flare. And you should be able to go into the Content Explorer uh, under Resources and Branding, and you should be able to put in your own company colors, uh, images, and font. Now, most of these project templates are set up just for online output only. There's a lot of them. But if you come way down to the bottom, you're going to see this section, Professional Pre-Written Manuals. So these are for PDF, and we've got one in here for Employee Handbook, and down here for medical office policy and procedures. And so the thing about these templates, you download these, not only do they have the structure, all the pieces in place, but they actually have content in them. You might be tasked with creating an employee handbook or a medical office policy and procedures manual, and you're not exactly sure where to start with content. Well, these will supply a lot of content for you and you can just tweak it for your own needs. Now let's talk about creating your own custom project templates because you might create a lot of Flare projects over time at your company and they all have kind of the same pieces, maybe some of the same content. And so what you can do is you can create one that has the basic structure and the shared content and you could save that as a project template. So the first thing you wanna do is come up here to tools and go to manage templates and I don't have anything in here, what you want to do is add a folder that already exists somewhere where you want to store your project templates. And you can also store other just file level templates too. So maybe topic templates that you create, but we're focusing here on an entire project. So I'm going to click this button right here and I get this little dialogue and I've already navigated to a place where I've set up a folder where I want to store my templates. Now, if you are working with a team of authors, you might want to put your folder up on a network drive where everyone can get to it and create new projects based on the same template. 
I'm just going to select this folder called My Stuff, click OK. That's where I'm going to put templates. Click Close. Now I have my project open. Uh, maybe I've got it configured just the way that I want. So I go to Project and select Save Project as Template. Give it a name, whatever you want, and then click Next. And you're going to have the opportunity to select or deselect any content files and click Next or project files. So you could leave some stuff out if you want. Click Finish and it's created. And now when you go to create a new Flare project, when you click Next to go to the next page of the wizard, not only are you going to see the factory templates, but you're going to see that folder and your project. So you can select that and your new project will be based on that template. Now notice the preview in here, which you will also see on the next page when you get to the branding. The only templates that are set up out of the box to have the preview looking the way that the output will actually look are the Flare factory templates and these down here, at least some of these uh, that you would click to get from the Madcap software website. If you want to customize the preview, so that it looks the way that your actual output will look, you'll need to do some advanced customization. Here's what you do. Go to the Flare online help and look for branding. You're gonna see this over on the right, come down to other activities, very last thing, custom branding project templates. Open that. There's a series of steps, several steps in here that show you how to create the template, but also how to adjust that preview to customize it so that it looks like your output. You'll see that kind of down here in steps nine and 10. So you're going to need to be sort of an advanced user who is comfortable with editing HTML and CSS in text files. And if you feel comfortable with that, you can create your own custom project template with your own preview. The last thing that I want to talk about is this PDF file that you will see when you create a new project based on one of the Flare factory templates. And so you can open up this PDF and follow a few instructions to adjust your project. These are specific to the different you know, templates that we went through. So they're gonna be slightly different. A lot of work will actually be done early on when you're in the Start New Project Wizard and you're on that branding page and you can choose your own company colors and image and font. But there are a few other things uh, pertaining to the particular templates that you might want to do in these instructions. So you can open that, follow them if you want, and then just delete this file when you're done because you won't need it any longer. And that's a look at project templates in Madcap Flare. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.